So I want to start off this video by saying in the future I'll be making a series of videos that will title for lack of a better word, genuine fake fountain pens. And the reason why I'll be doing this is in the past I have admittedly thrown around the word fake and I've done that incorrectly. I've used the word fake to describe pens such as the Jinhao 599 being a fake Lamy Safari. And if I'm honest, that is not the best way to use the word fake. The Jinhao 599 is more of a clone than a fake Lamy Safari because it doesn't actually say Lamy Safari on the side. It says Jinhao. There are differences with the nib and feed and the converter. It's certainly not a fake. It's close to being it, but it's more of a clone. So in this series, I want to actually look at fake fountain pens, see how well they actually copy the original fountain pen and whether or not you should go ahead and buy one. And I think I should start off this series by taking a look at probably one of the most faked fountain pens out there. And I think I should start this off by saying the pen that I'm using is a pen that I'm very familiar with because it's what my second fountain pen that I ever had and it's a fountain pen that I've had for close to four years and that is the Parker Sonnet. You've all seen this one and if I'm not mistaken it has an MSRP of about $200. So when I was on Alibaba and I saw a fake Parker Sonnet retailing for about $6 or about 1 40th of the price I knew I had to go ahead and buy one and I've got to say from first impressions and in the first week of using it, well the first few weeks of using it, it's actually a pretty good fake. To anyone who didn't know that it was a fake and what to look out for, you wouldn't know that this pen here was a fake fountain pen. In fact, all of you guys that are watching this video have probably seen this fountain pen before because it was the fountain pen that I featured in last week's video and looking at the comments, none of you even suggested that this was a fake Parker Sonnet. So as far as I'm concerned, they faked it pretty well. So before we take a look at what this pen got wrong, let's take a quick look at what this pen got right. Because as a general overview, and to someone who really didn't want to take an in-depth look, you would be surprised at how well this pen copied the fake Parker Sonnet. So first of all, the shape and the dimensions are correct. Everything is right to about 2mm. The barrel's the correct length and the correct shape. As well as that, the trim colours are correct and the engravings are also, for the most part, correct. If you just took a quick look at this, you wouldn't know the difference. One thing that did surprise me though was they also made the feed correct because the feed design on the Sonnet is I'm not going to say 100% unique, but it is certainly different to what you would find on a clone such as the Bale 388. And I was just expecting them to use a simple cheap clone feed. But no, they actually went ahead and designed the feed to look correct. As well as that, they also made the feed screw in, which is really surprising. It's screw in on the original and it's screw in on the clone, which is something that I was not expecting at all. As well as that, the nib actually clips onto the feed like it does on the original. And that's something that I really was not expecting when I unscrewed the feed on this fountain pen. And it's pretty much there where we leave where this pen got right. Because if you take a really in-depth look at this fountain pen, you can tell that this pen is not an original. So the first thing I'm going to point out that this pen got wrong is the gold. Now obviously there's no gold on this fountain pen because it is a $6 fake and I'm going to say there's probably no gold within 100 miles of where they made this fountain pen. But I do want to point out that there is certainly a distinguishable difference between the fake gold and the real gold. So for instance, they always go over the top with fake gold. It's always a very, very light and a very shiny um, texture. And that's something that always surprises me about fake gold. They go over the top with gold to make it pop out. And that really doesn't look like gold. It's sort of like a gold chrome and it looks really tacky and you can just tell that it's just a copper zinc alloy rather than actual gold. If you take a look at the real 
jewel sonnet and you take a look at the gold, it's always a much darker, much richer, much more yellow gold, and it looks much nicer than the gold that you would find on the fake. Next, if you take a look at the nib, you'll see that on the fake are engraved the letters and numbers 18K 750, whereas on the real one, there is no engraving under the Parker uh, letters. And here's the thing, this actually was a much older design. However, they have discontinued the 18K 750 in lieu of a much more simplified design. So while they didn't technically get it wrong, they actually haven't updated the fake for the current generation of Parker models. Next, if you take a look at the cap of the fountain pen, you'll see that the most obvious difference between the bands of the fountain pen is that the band on the fake fountain pen is much taller than the band on the real fountain pen. And that's one thing that I use to easily distinguish between real and fake Parker sonnets. Surprisingly though, for the most part, the engravings are gonna be correct. So on the band, the fonts are gonna be correct and most of the lettering is gonna be correct. As well as that, if you look at it from a distance, you'd say that the engravings are done pretty cleanly. However, when you look at the engravings on the fake using a microscope or a macro lens, you will discover that they are pretty crudely and poorly done. One thing that they did get wrong though was the date code. So on my one, it's listed as being made in TIII, which would date it to 2005. However, the date code on this, as well as many other fakes, dates it as IIIQ, which would date the pen to have been made in around 1990. Next, let's take a look at the iconic Parker Arrow clip. And this is one thing that has been pretty poorly reproduced. So on the real Parker Arrow clip, the engravings for the arrow's fins have been pretty cleanly cut and they're pretty deep and noticeable. However, on the fake, the fins are very poorly cut and they're hardly noticeable. As well as that, the material used is certainly poorer on the fake because even a little bit of pressure will permanently deform and bend the arrow clip. At the back of the barrel, you can see that there are resin dots. And while it perfectly fits on the real fountain pen, the fake one is poorly machined and it poorly fits and you can easily see this. You'll also notice that the fake fountain pen weighs slightly less. Sticking them on some scales and you'll see that the fake fountain pen weighs 22 grams, whereas the real one weighs 25 grams. One difference that is pretty noticeable is the fact that these two fountain pens use different converters and that the fake doesn't even try to copy the Parker converter. The Parker converter, as a lot of you will know, is just a simple slide plunger. There's no piston action. However, the converter that the fake comes with is completely different. It has, you know, a twist mechanism and it's actually very similar to the type of um, converter that you would find in a lot of bay or fountain pens. However, the design is slightly different and the nozzle is completely different to Bayo's uh, nozzle. As well as that, the nozzle is different to Parker's. I've tried to use a Parker converter and a Parker cartridge in this fountain pen and it just doesn't work. It's an extremely wide nozzle. I have no idea what the nozzle is for or what type of nozzle it is, but um, it is very different. Finally, let's talk about the writing and how well the pen writes. If I'm honest, this pen doesn't write as nicely as the real Parker Sonnet. The nib is as stiff as nails. There is almost no flex in this fountain pen. However, the grind is not that bad. There is a little bit of feedback and it's not as nice as the real Parker Sonnet, but it is all right in terms as, as far as Chinese fountain pens go. It's pretty reliable. I don't get all that many hard starts from it and it doesn't generally skip. So if you were to buy this fountain pen, you could easily use this pen as an everyday carry pen and no one would even know and you'd have no issues using it. Hello everyone, welcome to a very quick writing sample. So I'm just gonna be doing a quick comparison between the two pens. So this one here is the fake sonnet. The ink that I'm using is Diamine Ancient Copper and it's an ink that has really grown on me over the past few weeks. And it's a little bit hard to compare these two, but I will try because this one here is a fine nib 
and obviously is going to be some sort of stainless steel nib. Let's get a quick writing sample from it. And as you can clearly see from this writing sample, there is no dramas at all with this fountain pen. It is really good. There's no issue with the grinding. It is a little bit scratchy, but it's all right. The issue with this fountain pen is it's just sort of boring to use. It is as stiff as nails. There's no line variation. It's just not a pen that I'd want to use all that much. Uh, in terms of, you know, just natural line variation, there is very little with the grinding of the nib, and even when you want to go ahead and bend this nib, and this is as much pressure as I would want to put on this pen, there is just no line variation whatsoever. It's just a very boring fountain pen to use. Though it does work, there's no skipping involved, it does work. Though let's quickly compare this to a proper Parker Sonnet. So let's move this down. And this is the real sonnet. It has a medium nib and it is 18 karat gold. And yeah, there is a little bit of a skip there. That might be my fault, but um, quick writing sample will show you. Already you can see from the writing sample, there is certainly a difference in the ink flow. You see here, and um, say here, this is much lighter than average writing, and this is much darker than average writing. So there is certainly a difference in shading. Look at this, here is darker, here is lighter. You just don't get that from the other writing sample. There is much less um, shading. And as well as that, when you press down with this fountain pen, even though that there is no flex from this fountain pen, there is a lot more um, give in the nib. It's a lot more flexible and it's just so much nicer to write with. And honestly, I've done a lot of exams using this fountain pen and I thoroughly enjoy it. It is very, very nice to write with. Though, very little line variation, but that is okay because this fountain pen here is very, very nice to use. It's very reliable, apart from that one skip there, but it's certainly much nicer than the other fountain pen. Is it 40 times as nice? Maybe not, but it is certainly nicer. It's a lot smoother, much nicer ground. Hope that helps. And there you pretty much have it. And if I'm honest, I am very surprised at how well the fake fountain pen actually held up in comparison to the real Parker Sonnet. Now, if I'm honest, when it actually comes down to writing, I, I really do prefer the Parker Sonnet. The Parker Sonnet is a great workhorse pen and I have no issues with, with writing with it. And it's just more comfortable to write with in terms of it having a much softer nib as well as a much nicer grind. However, if anyone does want a Parker Sonnet, just a fountain pen that looks nice and you don't want to pay the $200 MSRP, you could easily buy one of these fountain pens and no one would be none the wiser. Because at the end of the day, this is a very usable fountain pen. It looks the part and... It looks a lot nicer than most other Chinese fountain pens that you would get for $6. However, on the record, I probably wouldn't recommend anyone to buy this because, you know, it is a fake fountain pen and, you know, you shouldn't buy one and you should throw these away, but um, it's actually a pretty good fake.